Welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation, along with... CJ Liu from the Fire It Up with CJ show. Woohoo! If you've ever wanted to get better at just about anything or everything, then do we have the fine-tuning, dialing-in show for you. Today we'll talk about incremental changes, stepping back, gaining awareness, and turning the dial to up-level everything in your life. That plus we'll talk about book marathon finish lines. <laughs> <laughs> Energy whirlwind, prosperity, slowing things down, satellite goodness, the uh, of laundry, new mics, COVID haircuts, dialing in lockdown, onboarding a new team member, and what in the world, a week of roo-roo love. Oh, no. With anything. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome back to the show, CJ. Are you ready to shine? I am ready to shine. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I forgot to tell you last week, I was walking in Seattle. We actually have our next door neighbor used to have a rooster. Yeah. He's gone. I don't know whatever happened to him. And then uh, and then when we were walking, we ran into someone who had like five or six chickens that were just running around his front yard. And I said, oh, you have chickens. And I said, yeah. And I said, oh, well, my friend has a rooster. And he's like, and he, he looked at me very sternly. Oh, and he no. said, you know, roosters are not allowed in the in Seattle. They're not permissible to have as domesticated pets. And I was like, oh, well, he's not from Seattle. And he's just like, still giving me a stern look. Roosters are the most maligned animal on the planet. If you have chickens for 50% of the birds are going to be males, 50% are going to be female. And yet they just throw all the males away. It mm -hmm. is craziness. Mm. So, yeah. but Ruru is not part of that 50%. And yes, he's he is. having the best week of his life because we're talking about incremental changes here. We've been saying, what can we do to up level our existence with Ruru? Because the roosters aren't normally known as family pets. And how do we get the situation to work? And we started giving him more and more love and just watching with detail every single thing. How does he eat? How does he sleep? When does he want this? When did he want that? I think we recruited Ruru at some point. So he was like, oh, They've got this, uh, they've got my house out now for me. And I know if I get tired, I can go inside and take a nap rather than get grumpy. And together as a team, we have completely up leveled. Ruru is happier than ever. We're happier with Ruru. And, and it's been really cool watching it. What are the small changes we can make on everything to improve, Im improve the situation? Not that it was, I don't want to call it a situation, but to make everybody happier. Wait, so how... Does he exit a cat door or how is he entering and exiting to his other house that's outside of the house? Well, no, his house, there is no house outside of his house. He has a, uh, a dog kennel, a soft dog kennel that we keep in his area that before was just in his bedroom and he would go sleep in it. But now we keep it in his area so we can go in and out um, with free will. And, um, and then if he goes in it, you close it and you put a blanket over it so it's nice and dark. So that he can take a nap because Ruru has felt, I think I mentioned last week, that he has to be on guard and protect us. And so he gets exhausted throughout the day. So now on his own volition, he goes in to take a nap in your, his yes. new quarters. Can you just put the blanket down all the time or do you have to like be watching when he goes down? And Well, well you, close, you close it behind him because if not, um, then it's open and if, they, if he's exposed, then he's on guard. Wow. Okay. Wow. He's that sensitive. So you're like the best, like you're like a rooster concierge service. <laughs> you could say that, although he's, he's, it's now working both ways. He's watching out for us. So, so he, he's like a, a, a mama daddy concierge service, not a kitty concierge service yet, but, but we're working on it. Yeah. How are the cats interacting with Ruru? The cats at later in the day are very, very chill with Ruru. Earlier in the day though, Ruru is, is like um, a hormonal teenage boy. And he looks at the kitties like, hubba hubba. And, <laughs> and the kitties are like, we're out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I mentioned last week that we, we have got the situation dialed with Henrietta. And, and there's less of a sense of desperation now. For those who don't know, it's a, a stuffed animal rooster companion. And, and for those who say, well, just get him a chicken he would need at least going through this period to, to, for everybody to happen, he'd need like a dozen chickens and, and God only knows where we'd put that. But with one Henrietta, he's good. Wow, that's so interesting. I wonder if you could have like a little hatchery with all these little chickens. 
we could when we settle down somewhere. I eventually. see. So then you can have some Henrietta-ish real life. That Henrietta's. would be really cool. And and we want that. We both want to be mobile and we want to settle down. So we're talking about where will we be next summer. Summer We're exploring uh, Alaska is what we're feeling. We'll see. Whoa. If we can actually get north there. Well, we tried to do it with the RV this year and that didn't work out. So we're, but we get to look at where is that next full-time home base. Because we're outside of Joshua Tree here. It is awesome here for the winter. It is awfully hot here for the summer. Mm. Wow. Okay, wow. So you, you're training Ruru. You're also training new team members. What's that all about? So we, we have my executive assistant. I love her very dearly. She is in the U.K., Oh. And she's wanting to go on to bigger, greater things. This we knew this would be a, a stopping point for her as as she's on her upward trajectory, and as she's heading out, and we're training the new person to come in. New person is going to be on our time zone. Oh, that's and nice. We, we never realized that that could be a challenge until we step back and look at things. Uh, e- even though we we do have a mentor who told us quite a while back that could be a challenge, we're like, no, we can make it work, which we did. But as we're fine tuning and dialing things in, we can see the advantages of this time zone and everything right now. The theme for us for 2021 is go pro. Not that we've ever been not pro, but we want to live more of a pro existence, whatever that means. And this is one of those pieces. So we're very excited to have our new team member on board. We're very excited for where our current team member is headed, um, wherever she shall land. Um, but just, this is another piece of that. Let's step back and look at things. Mm-hmm. How can we fine tune? How can we make subtle? They don't even have to be massive changes, but these small changes, not that bringing a team member is a small change, but the time zone, we think, oh, that's not that big, could be huge. Yeah, hugely beneficial, you're saying. Yes. Right, okay, yes, that's yes. your presumption is that it's going to be hugely. So that's okay. your, yeah. So I'll say, I love you, Yenny. Love you, Allison. (laughs) (laughs) That's very exciting. Okay, and you have new mics. What's going on with that? Another piece of the equation is we've got a mic that's five and a half years old. It's done a great job, but we're starting to get a little tired. And I get to record an audio book coming up, and we've had some big interviews. Like we had Don Miguel Ruiz earlier today. And and so it felt like one piece of that puzzle is it's time to bring that new mic, that new energy. Ooh. And rather than Which say, one are you oh, going to get? I'm curious. Are you going to get well, the boom mics? No, I went and, and we, well, we have boom mics, although I'm not sure if they're here or if they're in the storage unit in Colorado. I'm staying with the same headset, but the unit that I'm using, I'm upgraded from an, uh, oh, hold on one second. Oh, Jessica, Pook star. I know we are on air. But I am pretty sure I just saw Oates run by. He went that way. <laughs> that is our road runner. Our resident oh. road runner came running by and he was looking for food mm. because we've been developing the relationship. So we have a dozen doves now. We have a road runner. We have a squirrel. Um, we have many other desert birds. And the hummingbirds have found us. Mm. So, <laughs> And how does one develop a relationship? Are you just putting food out or what is it that you do? It's not just bribery. It's taking time with them. So we'll go sit outside with the roadrunner whose name is Oates. And we'll sit outside with Oates for 10 or 20 minutes. We'll talk with Oates. We'll well, have conversations. Wait, and where is Oates? Is Oates, how far is Oates when you go out, like proximity, like three feet away, a foot, sitting on your lap? Like, I don't know what to expect now with you, Michael. <laughs> Well, now at this point, Oates will eat out of a dish out of our hands. So wow. he's he's not sitting in our hands yet. We're told this is that roadrunners are very inquisitive, but to be this close is is fairly unique. Maybe it's not. But um, any but, dangers of the roadrunner like boring through your head or peeking out your eye, <laughs> poking at your eye? Um, it's not like the cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard they're very dangerous, especially with TNT, those roadrunners. Okay, maybe if you give the roadrunner TNT, meep, meep, it'd be, <laughs> the roadrunner is, is it's the cutest little thing. And and we were reading online that somebody somebody had written up about roadrunners that when they chatter their teeth, it means they're, they're scared, they're nervous, it's, it's danger. 
No, that's not true. When they chatter their teeth, it might be, but when they chatter their teeth, it's like calling for the mama for food. Oh. And, and so Oates comes up to us and says, can you, can you give me a little bit of food? And we'll sit down and we talk with Oates and we have conversations because birds speak with so many other different birds and I'm assuming with other animals. And they get more familiar, they get more comfortable with you. And what are you saying to the bird and what are you feeding Oates? So we're talking to Oates about what we're doing today. How is Oates doing? What's your family like? What's your situation? Um, how old are you? Food-wise, they're, they're more carnivorous uh, than many of the other birds. So, so they like dried mealworms. Or what we've been giving is once the kitties finish their food and the kitties are very, very finicky, and they won't finish whatever is in their plate. They, they do not belong to the clean plate club. Right, and then you can't reuse the food the next day. Bingo, because no, they're just going to, no. It's so just then, recycling their food. Excellent. It goes, it goes to Oats, and Oats is like, thank you very much. And so Oats visits somewhere around 8, 820 in the morning, and I can call Oats. So uh, Oats can be several hillsides away, and I can go, Oats, come here, Oats, and comes running the road runner. It's so cool. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. And the doves and the hummingbirds are also so part of your retinue. They're part of our eco cycle. So Ruru is also, he wants fresh seed and he will, he's not a very efficient eater. Chickens and roosters were not exactly designed yeah. for efficiency. And, and I say designed because man had more than a little hand and, in, in, in what turned out, fortunately or unfortunately. And so he has a lot of leftovers that he then won't go back to. And so each evening and each morning, we take the leftovers outside for the birds and they get kind of a dinner leftover meal and a, and a breakfast leftover meal. And the doves always come in pairs of two because mm -hmm. they mate for life. It's so, so cool. And then there's a lot of other desert birds that come in. And, and then the hummingbird feeders, we put them out two weeks ago. And it took about a week for the first bird to find it. And now it's a bird. It was a couple of days ago, every 10 minutes. I'm not sure. I'm looking up right now. I'm not sure if it's more frequently than that. There's hummingbirds about once every 10 minutes. And then there's another bird that Jessica may have identified that can also use the hummingbird feeder. Wow. And so we're, we're growing our little clan and, and it makes us feel more grounded and connected. I love to say that we are, well, first off, we're walking, talking expressions of the earth. We are dirt incarnate. We're, we're alive, but, but we're from the dirt. We go back to the dirt, at least our physical body, not spirit. Um, but you are your land. Mm -hmm. And so the more you connect to the animals, to the plants, to the trees, which is obviously a plant, but the more you connect to the land, whatever you've got, even if it's just a, 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 a little weed popping up through the sidewalk, whatever you've got there, you connect to it and you feel more grounded. You know, I, um, I, uh, you know, my, my big kick right now is five elements. And so the thing that I'm finding, um, that I'm generally disconnected from, or I need to have more connection is earth and mm -hmm. water. And, um, and in my meditations, there has been a calling of like, you know, I call in Mount Rainier, which is the big yes. mountain where I am. And I call in Lake Washington to be supportive of, you know, my spiritual growth or because in the shaman's belief, those things can either support or not support you. So you call and ask for your support and you tell them what your intentions are and you ask them not to disturb you. And if you, if there is energy around, please, you know, house provide, you know, um, a calm place for me to sleep, you know, or whatever it is so that there's not kind of disturbances, but it's, um, I don't know. I just like it. Does it make a difference? I don't know. I mean, look at your place. I mean, you're, you're so, you're getting grounded and you're getting all these animals and not surprisingly, you get a lot of air animals, which both of you guys have plenty of air. <laughs> so you just attract all, the, I mean, I find it fascinating birds that you can, yeah. you connect with a lot of birds. Um, it's funny because I think I told you last last week is that water kidney energy in the winter mm -hmm. is like the thing that's prevalent and um for me it's about it's water but it's like water contained in earth so it's about having good earth and then good water and 
the, I guess the spot here is like, like your face becomes like your eyelids is one of the areas where on your face, because your body is holonomic. So whatever you're experiencing on your face is happening in your kidneys, but it's because it's all um, related. And uh, so my big thing is a lack of water, even though it's been raining like crazy in Seattle. So it's not, it's just one of those things. And, and, the, and, the, and the most interesting thing in the class this week is my whole face is numb. My So it hasn't come back yet? No, it still hasn't come back. And I don't know if I mentioned this last week, but um, one of the theories was that perhaps it's um, as your body changes, someone who actually does facial massage, she works with people in facial massage that have like cancer and different kinds of things and they can work on, she can work on their face, but not on other parts of their body. Um, and she said that like, sometimes it's when you're the mask, did I say this last week, the mask that you have on your face? When you mm-hmm. start changing internally, actually your visage, the mask that you put on top of your face changes. And so, isn't that interesting? So that so that's what she told me that I thought, I don't know if that's true, but kind of cool that that's a possibility that, I mean, I'm, I, I can't explain what is happening with me. I'm having an energy whirlwind. It, it's crazy. How cool is that? I'm going to go with cool. It's yeah. shift. It's changing. We have no idea what's coming. You, know, you might come and turn into a butterfly here. <laughs> <laughs> and fly over to you and like get some food over. To- I don't know if I can fly that far all the way to California, but. <laughs> so a couple things on the land. First off, we call in our automatic writing. Mm-hmm. We call in um, the elders of the earth, the mm. spirit of the earth, the spirit of this land. And so we will talk because this land has housed how many creatures who have grown up, who have lived, who have died on this on this land, whether that's dinosaurs, whether that's coyote, and whether that's people. And so we call in that life from the land to mm. nurture us, to take care of us. When I got here, I think I got down on my knees. I'm going to guess I had to have kissed the ground and asked for permission to be on this land mm. and asked the elders for permission and to sustain us and to take care of us. Mm. And how is that working? I mean, so I know you just did your book marathon finish line. So how's like, how does it feel? Like, is it, does there, does it feel like a sense of protection or you just know there's no blockages or how did it work for finishing your book? Cause the last time I spoke to you, you were like at galleys, I think, or I don't know, but pretty close to being done. It was, um, well, it was a pretty close each day for the <clears> last week of bounce back and forth. You get a round of edits done it goes back to the editor, it comes back, it goes back, it comes back. And then there were a few, um, the back cover of the book looked great until I finished the internals of the book. And then I had bandwidth to look at the back cover and say, oh wait, this gets to be taken care of, that gets to be taken care of, this language gets to be improved because you would have bandwidth for one piece. And then they finished the internals of the book, but now let's look at the table of contents. Oh, we see this, that. And so it was peeling all these layers of the onion. Yeah, finishing touches. So proud of it. You can pre-order it right now. And and it looks like the first run may run out. It, it, for a little bit on Amazon, it showed out of stock. So if you want this, it's good to get your pre-order in. And it helps get up the rankings as well, certainly. Right. Uh, it's called AWE, the Automatic Writing Experience. Amazon has it now. Um, but there's been this incredible grounding sense here that we can get stuff done mm. that we are hooked in anchored into the earth and, uh, and that makes sense yeah because you were traveling around like you're like driving yeah. here driving there not sure where you're going to be so now you're kind of like i'm here and so there's and like i'm supported by the land and i'm physically in a home that i can be in that would make sense so that there's more grounding and and there's something about this land in particular which is very earth oriented stone granite and and it's got the joshua tree rocks that came up from volcanoes of of uh molten rock that came up fast and made these bubbly formations there's something very earthy grounding here now we both grew up on the east coast we lived in maui for years we lived uh in colorado where there's tons of snow we love water we don't need too much she got sick from humidity and mold but we love water. So 
And we found Ruru loves water too. The most mm. calming thing we can give to Ruru, Ruru, which helps us as well, is the sound of the ocean or the sound of water throughout the day. Interesting. And he loves music, but he particularly loves the sound of water. And for us to balance, as you're saying, the elements, because other than these magnificent Joshua trees out here, there is very little greenery. Mm. Our driveway is sand. Nobody has a lawn here. It's all sand. You go for yeah. a hike. It's a beach without water. It's wild. Yeah. It's a very different way. And a lot of people really groove on it. And that's what they've grown up with and they need and love. And then we're looking at it going, whoa. But again, we get up really She's early. making me thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out before the sunrise. Mm -hmm. The clouds are changing color and I feel the water element. I run, I, I um, have the sound of water throughout the day. And um, we, for myself, instead of taking showers, I take long baths here, which mm. feels very good and gives me a lot Lots of, of water, water time. element. Yes. Wow. Wow. I think like that's I said, great for the winter. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because I would imagine that you have a lot of space, which you guys are very open. You know, in the desert, you'd have a lot of space, a lot of earth, um, a lot of fire, right? Because it's like, you know, very sunny there, I assume, oftentimes. Is it mostly sunny every day? No, it's interesting. It's a balance. It hasn't been too sunny. But what happens is the clouds, which will turn into snowstorms to the east of here, they form here, and you can see them overhead. And you're like, oh. why aren't you guys raining over us? But it's not quite as, it doesn't feel as fiery, for instance, as Sedona. Mm. So, Sedona with the red rock, that felt like fire. This does not, at this time of the year, mm. feel that fiery. Now, we're up at 4,000 feet, so um, it is cooler here. The sun, uh, which surprises me, um, because of our, it would be uh, latitude, the sun still doesn't come up that high, so close to solstice, and we're what, a couple of days away. Um, so it hasn't had that fiery element right now, but different times of the day represent different elements. Mm -hmm. And so we don't <clears throat> typically play as much midday, which has that highest fire, Although right now I'm okay with it because that's kind of the warmest time of the day. But that would be your fire element in the day. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I was just thinking about summer, so, I mean, win winter solstice, yes. which is crazy. So it's happening in a couple of days. The big Jupiter and Saturn conjunction are happening. And I was told on that day we should do nothing like slow down and just do nothing but meditate and slow down. And it's really interesting because kidney energy mm -hmm. is all about slowing down. And it, it's been very interesting just kind of noticing how everyone, oh, God bless you. Oh, you're allergic to slowing down. <laughs> Did you mute yourself? I know you, I saw you sneeze twice. And I know that's part of your kind of ritual is to sneeze twice. So I think we're done. Um, but <laughs> yeah, so I've been, I'm going to be slowing down. And um, the other thing as you get your mic ready <laughs> is that I've been thinking about, so um, when Jupiter conjuncts with Saturn, it's about looking at where those planets fall within your natal chart. So, and then what chart, what house. And so for me, it's um, in the house of money. And I thought, well, what does that mean? What's that? It's interesting. So I've been thinking about it as prosperity. And I've been thinking about vocation as um, the thing that you are brought to this world to do that will bring you joy. So that's apparently what you're supposed to be thinking about with um, Jupiter and conjuncting with Saturn. So I'm curious for you, Michael. I know we talked about this last week. What kinds of things are you contemplating? So what we've been doing is we've been focusing on lots of mind maps around what seeds we want to plant, mm -hmm. uh, both for Saturn-Jupiter conjunction, both for solstice, for this whole giant rock coming to a stop and then starting to swing the other direction for entering, going from a fifth sun to a sixth sun to an age of Aquarius 
to, to an, a new age, whatever we want to call this time period, going to the period of the eagle and the condor, it seems important that we plant these seeds. Now, it's interesting that you say pause on the solstice because the way our show works, we tend to record shows on Thursday and Friday. Mm. The next Thursday and Friday are Christmas, and, uh, Christmas Day and the day after Christmas, and the week after are New Year's Day and the day after, new, or the day after that. So it's not, those days are not ideal for recording. So I'm actually recording on mm. Monday. Mm. However, um, I'm recording a little bit more with Don Miguel Ruiz, super exciting. Uh, Dr. John Martini, where we're going to talk about money, super exciting. Corinne Grillo, we're going to talk about bringing in the angels. So it actually feels kind of like a party. Yeah. But I'm calling in really, really cool people on Monday. And I think that's planting the seed because I look at everything of what's your intention? Mm. What do you desire more of? And what do you know what house your um, Jupiter and Saturn reside in? I don't. You mentioned this last week, and I was like, I get to have an astrologist on to talk about this. Oh, fun. I don't. I imagine that I could plug it into a calculator online. Yes, you can. Um, but I don't know. Okay, that will be interesting to see. That would be the last pu- piece of your puzzle. Because you know it's about prosperity, right? I mean, and, and I think prosperity is more than just like money coming in. Although money is energy, it's just about what is going to make you feel fulfilled, rich, and, and, and complete. And so I've been focusing on that. And I'm going to, I, I actually have over the course, it feels like I've almost been, I think I told you this last week, been preparing for this over the last six months. So I'm just taking all my materials and like synthesizing and coming together. So I have one concrete, concrete sense about what I'm doing. Cause I, I, like, journeyed over three months just writing and journeying and and journaling and uh yeah it's interesting I had an opportunity and you'd be so proud of me Michael some potential opportunity and I was about to leap on it and um with my husband's help and my own questioning I'm like no I don't think I should I think I need to write this thing and then I wrote this person who I thought oh I really want to work on this and I said you know I'll get back to you in a month and a half and we'll see, you know, what makes sense Be- after, you know, after I do some kind of contemplation on myself, like, what do I, what do I really want to do? I mean, is this the best thing? Um, so that was interesting. And then kind of like little opportunities, I'm seeing all sorts of different possibilities and I'm kind of like, oh, that would be a great opportunity. Oh, this is a great business opportunity, but I'm like, but I don't want to do it. Like I'm getting a sense of the things that would bring me joy freedom, happy, you know, and, um, meaning, and I'm being way more discriminating. So hopefully, um, in the near future, I'll have my list of what I'm interested in doing next. So it's, it's pretty exciting. It's a culmination of a bunch of thinking over the last year. If I was to give you home, yeah, I would say to take a giant sheet of paper, if you've got an easel, use, use one that's something that big, a sketchboard. I would get in the center, I would get in there 2021, give a theme, like year of prosperity, whatever it is for you, a year of going pro, and I would put all around it, I like to use a a dial like a clock, and I put 12 o'clock, something super meaningful, one o'clock, and they don't have to be the exact things. We don't know, you have so many possibilities that are continuously coming to you. It's about, am I looking for more peace? Am I looking for more time wealth? Because you talked about uh, prosperity, it's not just, obviously, financial wealth. What are all the key components? And you do that this weekend, and you can draw it out, and you can use colors. In fact, I have colored Sharpies, I think, coming in a day or so here, so I can play with this myself. And you're planting powerful seeds for everything to come mm-hmm. and saying, universe, this is what I desire to cultivate. Please help me bring mm. more of this in. Yeah, I like it. I, I'm going to go. I feel inspired. I actually have a whole bunch of magic workers, so I'm going to go try and do that exactly that so um what what are what so i have a couple more things on your list michael yeah, that we and, haven't and i'm going to add something real yeah. quickly which is two things that are coming together three things that are coming together at solstice unexpectedly first off jessica's feeling the urge to paint and we have a uh, a guest house which you can use as a studio now for painting and she got her oil paint supplies ordered so they're going to show up on solstice. Yay! So she can shift into doing something from the heart because she mm. is so engaged in this business that we get to balance that with something nice. really from, from her inner being. So that's exciting. Um, we have, we're starting again. We have taken a pause with the tour. We're starting running again. 
And so we're getting that cranked and going again right now at solstice. And the book, it's so cool to me that the book was supposed to come out last summer. And instead, we are just finishing edits right now. It's like planting the seed on solstice for the most magnificent. And it's not an average solstice. This is like the solstice of solstices. Launching it through December 21st, I think there's an energy behind it. Yeah, I think so too. We talked about that last week. I'm just so excited about your book. So you actually, can people go to Amazon and pre-order it now, you said, oh, yeah. right? Oh yeah, they can go to Amazon. It's called Awe, the Automatic Writing Experience, and you can pre-order it. And uh, very excited. The last I checked had been up to 40,000th most popular book, which doesn't sound like much until you realize there are millions of books. Yeah. And, and the book... Um, isn't in print yet. Yeah, that's book. great. So, Woohoo! All right, so what's with awe of laundry? It's a different kind of awe. <laughs> yeah, we've got our laundry machines running. And, uh, <laughs> is that worth celebrating? Oh my God, that's worth celebrating. <laughs> it is the little things. You want to talk about dialing in and feeling better. Having your own laundry machines, as many people know, because if you're, you're in the laundromat part of the world, meaning if that's where you're at, and then to have your own lot of machines again is like, <laughs> What were you hand washing before? No, we were eking by. We oh, gosh. By. And, and, and at one point, I'm like, do I need to just go buy some clothes? Like, <laughs> we are sad. so not the disposable kind of people. But we had marathon book edits, three weeks of, if you're breathing, you should be editing. Oh, my gosh, Michael. Wow. Okay, so you got your laundry. You got your COVID haircuts. What's that all about? Uh, Jessica got us both haircuts, both from her. She got her haircut this week. She did her own hair, which was amazing, and it looked great. And she did mine again uh, because we're in a lockdown here in California. So, like, no, oh, so no hair. Because I think in Washington, um, hairdresser, well, I know, yeah, they're still open here in Seattle. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay, so, you can, <laughs> so you're back to giving each other haircuts. <laughs> and then... We are, when the first went into lockdown, we're, we're like, when do you go to the store? And one store didn't have a line. Another one would have a line, you know, down a, a city block or something. And you're learning where you can go when. And so when I say dialing in, it's getting your systems in place. You're going, all right, it's a new situation. And it's a lockdown. What do I do? What do I not do? What can I do safely? What can I not do? So tomorrow's mor tomorrow morning, we'll go to the farmer's market right when they open and like buzz through and get a bunch of fresh stuff. We'll go to Whole Foods on Sunday morning, right when they open, get most of the things delivered to the car. And then if you remembered one or two last things, they only just opened, you run inside and get it. And so we're learning how to work with a new rhythm. You know, I, I had to do a COVID test and then I also went to my doctor to just make sure that I didn't have any neurological disorder. So I went for a uh, a physical earlier this week or maybe late last after our interview and uh when i went to get my covid test in washington which we were in a yellow state we're not in like a big bit you know but still everything we you, all the restaurants are shut down um gyms are shut down um but when i walked um what was i going to say so when i went to drive in to get my covid test there was no one there was literally no one there at all and the gentleman, I said, he's like, don't tell anyone, but, you know, these are the days that you should go. But most people come in the morning, and if you go first thing in the morning, there's going to be a wait. But most people don't think about going in the afternoon, where if you go in the afternoon, there's nobody. So it's, it is kind of these things, and it's almost like going maybe opposite to what you think, you know, like if, if you – I remember someone doing this research on – like, what are the most, like, where do people, most people do? Like, what bathroom stall do most people use? Yeah. And, and they can tell by the rolls of toilet paper. And, and now that I've known that I literally go to the, I think about what's a, the least course, likely <laughs> bathroom that I would do, that I, stall that I would pick. And then I pick that, but it's almost the same thing when, in that whole dialing in, like, even my son was saying, you know, he, he's been like sleeping in and he's like, I actually think for me it's better. So I said, why don't you try like waking up really early like you were before and seeing if that works. And it, it did like just subtle things like that, I think make it a huge difference. If you can kind of, if you're willing to try and say like, I don't know, I know that something's not working, but kind of dialing in little things. Um, 
Not that I did that yesterday. So yesterday, I, oh, I forgot to tell you. So I was, um, yesterday, I, I had this huge energy surge. And all of a sudden, everything in my body hurt simultaneously. It was just like, it, and it was like the kind of pain like you get when, when you have like um, um, food poisoning where you're like, ah, you know, like every, it was like moving around in my body all over the place. And then I, I talked to a friend and I tried to go see my cranial. I tried, I called a friend who does energy work. I'm like, is this energy? And he's like, yeah, I think it's also structural. I think you may need to do some cranial sacral work because, you know, from that concussion, mild concussion that I had a while ago that I, I think like something, my husband gave me a massage and I think it just like unlocked, lodged something in my brain. Yeah. Um, and, uh, so then I had to go see a chiropractor yesterday who does, like, he was just basically adjusting my skull. <laughs> and if you ever want to feel just totally messed up, have someone adjust your skull for half an hour <laughs> and see what happens. It wasn't minor, but I'm hoping it's incremental changes. I have no idea why I, why I can't feel my well, it's, face. It's interesting because I was just starting to Google because there are all these interesting post-COVID syndrome uh, symptoms. Oh. And so I was just starting to Google because we know you got sick once during this time period, if not oh, twice. Yeah, th yeah, three times. There we go, three times. And I don't know if antibodies, if they're the no actually they don't they didn't test you for antibodies. They tested are you do you have COVID? Yeah. And and so it's worth doing some investigation and investigative work to see if that could be, because there are all sorts of post-COVID neurological symptoms. Oh, there are. Oh, I'll, I'll yes. take a look and see. I mean, my no doctor, I just saw my doctor and she didn't mention anything, so. Whatever know. it is, it's perfect. It's helping you on your journey and you've got your, 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 <laughs> I guess so. your head realigned. So I did get my head <laughs> any better than this. <laughs> I'm not even sure. I can tell you that there, it's almost like my body is going through all these transitions. Like it's almost like there's a finish line in which it's trying to hit, of which I'm not sure what the finish line date is, but it's like working towards some goal of getting my body aligned. And I've been kind of, I've, I've told you how, um, you were telling me before how you have scars and you've, and it's about healing that so you can actually create the energetic connection. And um, I'm now taking a class in TUMO. Have you ever, um, learned about too. it's those those running then, monks who would go in the snow and they'd run yes 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 i am someone who practiced that without knowing that i practiced that okay <laughs> with wim hof dates, right yeah well prior to wim prior to knowing anything about wim hof one of the first dates jessica was on with me although maybe she said it wasn't a date we went camping with a group and they were sitting on the side of a glacial lake uh, you know there's ice all around the edge but it was starting to melt in springtime and, and I'm, I'm waist deep or deeper with my camera out, uh, putting the camera on the edge of the water so that I could get refracting through the water and up to the edge of the ice and, and could keep my body warm or get steam coming out of my body and hung out in, in the glacial lake for over 30 minutes. <laughs> of course, Michael. <laughs> why not? <laughs> yeah. It's actually really cool. I'm learning. I'm this winter, I'm going to, this January 1st, or in, sometime in January, I'm going to start taking a TUMO class to learn about it and hoping that it's going to, the whole idea is that you create steam. You know, you have a, a cauldron in your belly and, you, and you're melting the water and like karmic gunk in your system, in your central channel so that you can change your neurological aspects. So I'm hoping that is going to help, but it's been, it, this has been kind of the most crazy journey ever. The, these, so I've been massaging my stomach and I mean, these things all started from massaging my, my stomach, this whole litany of physical things that are becoming unwound again. It was all from connecting back to my source and surgery, um, childbirth, those are both things that get you disconnected from your perineum and root chakra. So, oh my gosh. <laughs> I, I look at it so cool. I, I'm sure I mentioned last week about our Rising Phoenix new logo. Yeah. And and you're disassembling to be reassembled at a higher level. Yes, I'm, I'm hoping that that is what's happening. It's I When I was reviewing our notes last time, I'm hoping it's rewiring. I have, because I have, otherwise I have no idea what's going on. And there's, there, there's this 
I go in between going, stop worrying about it. It's fine. Everything is fine. You've been to the doctor. What else can you do? And then going, but don't be stupid. Like maybe if you're going to, this is like, you know, signs of a brain aneurysm, like you should be checking this out. But I've already seen a doctor. So she's like, well, unless once you can't taste food and you lose all, you know, touch with your fingertips, then see me. But otherwise you're good. Like, okay. So we'll, we'll all see. All we can say is it's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> More traveling in the, I would say that one of the gifts of COVID is just being able to rest in the unknown. Totally. And this thing that's happening with these physical is just really kind of like, okay, I don't know. I don't get it. I hope it gets resolved. And the last time this happened, I did have something else where I had this energy go through me. And for a month, I couldn't taste or feel anything. So, and it resolved itself. So I'm assuming the same thing will happen. So anyways, what do we have left on your list, Michael? We uh, talk about know, laundry, be, new mics. I think I we've got everything. A, a new class in January um, for helping people create a new you. It's a, it's a master class. So it's like a mastermind where we get together and I walk people through step by step because I'm seeing this new year as we're all starting to come out of the cocoon. We are all starting agree. to say, all right, what happened? <laughs> How do I put this thing back together? And we can't go back. That to yeah. me is part of this dialing in processes. Yeah. Let's not try to find the old norm. Right. Let's try to find a new norm. And that's what you're doing to me. You're pulling on the thread and you're keeping uh, exploring and being open to what, okay, maybe it's this, maybe it's that, maybe it's the other. Maybe I make space. I'm proud of you, CJ. You didn't take the latest, greatest bell and whistle. You said, let me make space for what feels so right in the new year. Yes. And also knowing when feel, things feel so wrong. You know, I, I went to this conference um, and I thought, well, maybe this is where I want to go. And it's like, I couldn't even listen for more than 20 minutes. I'm like, I, I, I got to go. I like, I'm like, I need to use the restroom or I need to get a snack. I'm like, okay, <laughs> what's pretty clear is you do not want to do this work. So that's the main message. Don't even listen to the rest of it. You just don't want to do it. And until you're ready to do something like this, don't even bother listening to the various conference. There's like three other PowerPoints. I'm like, I don't think I can do it. Listening to that intuition is so important. I've had two interviews in the last week where I was told uh, either don't read the book or read it very, very superficial level. Instead, I want you to dive deep. This is where I'm hearing from source and hearing in my automatic writing. I want you to dive deep in the interview just by listening. I don't want you to read. So one book I'm like fighting and I hear no. And, and I go back to, to typing up some notes and I'm like, well, but I'll take a no. <laughs> you listen to that intuitive hit. I believe, truly believe now more than ever. Yeah. I've been doing that with my interviews recently. I'd say for over the last year, because I was like, I just don't want to spend as much time doing these because it's for me, it's a nonprofit endeavor. And so it's like, mm -hmm. I just, I don't want to keep on spending time doing these. So if I don't have to do all that prep, and I just kind of like, I do some prep, like I look for about an hour at the website, I look through the materials, I look who the publisher sent me and I kind of like, and if I'm really interested, then I'll read the whole book. But now I, I just don't even read the book. I look at the questions I submit. And, and then even that I don't even use. Sometimes I just go and I have an intuitive sense of what I'm supposed to ask and I just go from there. So anyway, so anything, and what, final words? Because I don't think I'll see you next week because next week is Christmas Day. It is. It is. Um, nothing's rigid everything's changing everything every aspect of your life can be improved and don't take that as a, i have to fix anything nothing's broken but if you want to dial in a little, a little bit more and dial it in a little bit more why not we have control over very little right now but of what we do have control over play with it see what you can do with it massage it like massaging the belly or massaging your scalp but play with life and dial it in until it feels really good and, as the expression goes, juicy to you. That's <laughs> what I've got. So I, my final words are, this has been the close of a phenomenal year. And, um, well put. Yes, and I, and I wish everyone 
um, not of a, a peaceful Christmas and and really actually in some ways a peaceful Christmas is really what it's about anyways it's about tuning in going inside and connecting deeply with the people that you love so I'm, I'm wishing deep heartfelt connections with all those that you love um, I'm incredibly grateful to you Michael and um, the inspiration that you've given me throughout the year and in pure entertainment with the um <laughs> With the addition with of your new family member. Oh, man. We did an interview earlier this week with Dane here, and I hadn't put him in the car yet because I wanted to show him to Dane here. He's one of my favorite guests and human beings. And I showed him Ruru on air, and he goes, you're not putting him in the car right now. He's like, he's, he's in the interview with us. <laughs> and so we did an interview yesterday with me holding Ruru for nearly the entire time. <laughs> Surprise, Ruru himself didn't answer the questions. <laughs> It's been your embracing of life and the uncertainty in life and just leaning in and not and 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 flowing with life and consciously and intentionally choosing your path um, is inspirational. I hope it is inspiring others to do the same because in a lot of ways, I think that this is what this year has been all about. And so I hope that everyone in the close of the season can also see the beautiful silver linings that have occurred. Because if you really look at your life, which I've been doing, and just as this year is closed, there have been so many gifts. I could take every single thing that has been frustrating and hard, and I can tell you the, the gift within each of those things. So so that's my gift to everyone out there is to take the take a couple of moments as we move into the next year and the next season and think about the silver linings in your life. Woohoo! Woo! <laughs> and and I'll, I'll give a send love there. <laughs> if you're listening to this, I love you. If you're not listening, I still love you. If you never want to listen, that's cool. I love you even more. <laughs> I love you. I love you. I love you. That's it. Aww. So for, and I love you, CJ. I really do. Thank you. This You make this a treasure. Every, every single Friday, you make this such a beautiful, treasurable time. Thank you. So for everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler and CJ Lou from the Fired Up with CJ show. Saying be well, have fun, have the most magnificent uh, Christmas and New Year's and whatever day is most meaningful to you, especially this day this moment, this now, and above and beyond all else, shine bright. Woo-hoo!